guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the extremely fun 2020 Hyundai Vloster N, courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so some of you may already know, as of February 2020, Hyundai is now offering three years of complimentary maintenance to go along with the very best warranty that America currently offers, being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain, which is excellent when you consider cars like this, cars that are extremely fun to drive being warrantied for that long. And so if you were comparing them though, the Foster N is actually $10,000 less than the Civic Type R and has around 47 more horsepower than the Golf GTI. All of these reasons made me definitely want to check out this thing once again. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the 2020 Vloster N will start at $27,600. Do want to mention though, there is a performance package that we do actually happen to have today. That actually then puts the starting price at $29,700. But regardless of which setup that you go with there, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 250 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 260 pound-feet of torque available at 1,400-ish RPM, power sent to the front wheels through a six-speed manual with rev matching. That is pretty cool. And although for 2020, there's no automatic or DSG available, for 2021 coming soon, there will be a dual-clutch transmission available. So if your heart was set on a dual-clutch, just wait a little bit longer and then it's going to be there for you, basically. So then 0 to 60 time comes in at approximately 5.5 seconds, according to Car and Drive. Quarter mile time, 14.2 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour. That's pretty insane considering it's a hatchback. And MPG numbers 22 in the city, 29 highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. Yeah, 87 octane. Save you a little bit of money there. It's kind of cool. I emphasize that because, of course, the Honda Civic Type R takes premium fuel. So I always have to mention that. And so one other thing when it comes to that performance package that we have today that actually bumps the horsepower number up to 275 horsepower. So that is actually the one we have today. But now for anybody wondering what N actually is when it comes to the Veloster N. N actually stands for Nam Yang, which is the research and development center in Korea for Hyundai, of course. So that is why you are going to begin seeing a slew of different N cars and SUVs coming out from Hyundai in the near future besides just strictly the Veloster N that we have here today. But so, but then before we test out the acceleration on the Veloster N, I did want to mention there are some drive modes that do come standard on this one. All of those drive mode buttons are actually located on the steering wheel, there is a drive mode button to the left, and there is that checkered flag or end mode on the right side of the steering wheel. Of course, we will put it in that a little bit later, but that is gonna be how you're actually going to adjust those driving modes. What they're actually going to do is adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, the exhaust sound, and the suspension setting. So quite a bit actually being adjusted by those driving modes. I like that, especially the exhaust sound. We'll get to that exhaust clip later in the video, but also with that end mode button though, you can also create your own customized mode where you can adjust the settings, adjust about everything up on that infotainment screen. So you got that too, if you wanted to. But so now having mentioned all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and get back on the highway here. Let's do a quick little acceleration, nothing too crazy, but just kind of want to feel out how this thing shifts once again. I remember reviewing this car last year. That's why I put it that way, but want to feel out how it shifts, the grab points, all that fun stuff. We'll do a quick little acceleration here. Let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Vloster N here up to speed. All right, let's get on the highway here. A little bit of a rolling start. Here we go. Dang, pull. No loss of grip. Haha. <laughs> okay. There actually wasn't all that much torque steer. A lot of times when you put that amount of power to the front wheels, you do get a little bit of torque steer pushing you off the road. But really, with the Vloster N there, that wasn't that bad. There was a slight bit but really nothing that would bother me on a day-to-day -day basis that was that was a good bit of pull that was actually quite fun i'm digging that and actually i wasn't even in end mode silly me i should have done that but still a ton of fun even without being in the fun driving mode let's go ahead and switch that up there we go 
Oh wow, that exhaust note. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch solid rear disc. And actually with that performance package, those rotors are upsized quite a bit. So up front with the performance pack that we have today, 13.6 inch ventilated front disc and 12.4 inch solid rear disc. As far as the braking feel goes, it's been excellent. Certainly no issues with any brake pedal delay or anything like that. Did want to also mention, again, with that performance package, you actually get red brake calipers with the N logo on the front. That is pretty darn cold, but overall, braking feels perfectly fine, though. But touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, and if you were to go with the performance pack that we have here today, once again, you will get a limited slip differential as well. That is pretty darn cool. Sending torque to the wheel with the most traction, that's always a plus as well especially in a performance car like this so anyways as far as the steering feel goes since i put it in that end mode now it is much weightier i am a fan i should have put it in that from the start i do apologize but definitely a very heavier weighted steering feel i can hear the crack already i love this but definitely a nice weighted steering wheel especially in that end mode and again those steering modes do adjust so if you wanted a looser steering feel that is going to be available for you ultimately as far as ride quality goes i would say it's pretty much as expected for a car like the Vloster and it's certainly not the smoothest ride in the world but I wouldn't expect that out of this car honestly it's kind of close to my Mustang GT basically it kind of feels like that so you can feel a lot of the road but honestly again that's a good thing for a car like this you're kind of better connected to the road so you're gonna feel a bit more but that's expected as far as cabin noise goes all I continue to hear if I downshift let's do that crackle all day long man absolutely love that when you put it in the end mode the exhaust clip is absolutely amazing so anyways when it comes to cabin noise not a whole lot of exterior noise is coming into the cabin minus the exhaust which is absolutely beautiful but touching on visibility i actually can see decently good out the back i will say with the sloped roof line it's not the best it's not going to be the best visibility out there but you know what it's manageable i certainly wouldn't have any issues driving this on a day-to-day -day basis with that visibility so no issues for me but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful performance blue 2020 hyundai vloster n all right so here she is you guys the beautiful 2020 hyundai vloster and love the look of this thing i don't know why anyways as far as the colors go there's actually only four of them so i'm gonna list them off real quick chalk white racing red ultra black and performance blue which is kind of what the end brand is known for at this point and that's what we have today of course i absolutely love it but to the sides let's go ahead and start up front led headlights do come standard with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they do turn on automatically for you there so that's always nice led daytime running lights also coming standard up there that end specific front fascia with the end logo found in the upper corner of the front grill there definitely looks good and you got some red accenting along the side skirts and the front there as well so and the red accenting is there it goes along with the end colors as well the black and red and the end logo so it definitely looks good overall and definitely gives it more of a unique look making it known that this thing's got a little extra power compared to the other cars out there all right so making our way to the side now here's the fun part about the Veloster get ready there is one door you guys can see that there's clearly one door on the driver's side but if we switch around here there are actually two doors on the passenger side love that about this car it's so quirky so you got two doors Doors on the passenger side if you ever have rear passengers that's the side they're going to want to enter on one door on the driver's side i don't know why that's so cool take a look at the side mirrors they are gloss black power adjustable heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals and you do have some gloss black side skirts to go along with those side mirrors as well with the red accenting to tie in with the front of course take a look at the wheels and tires 18 inch alloy wheels do come standard however with the performance pack those are upsized to 19 inch alloy wheels wrapped in pirelli p0 summer tires perfect fitment for this nice almost summer day we're at the tail end of spring here but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the end here of course you have that performance blue shark fin antenna up top just below that a very menacing gloss black rear spoiler with an integrated brake light in a triangular form there just below that rear window wiper of course you have some end badging on the rear hatch as well actually led tail lights do come standard on the veloster end here so got them as well and there's actually let me show you guys you guys can probably see that there's actually veloster 
etched into the taillights as well. Love that little cue there. But so then of course, just below it all, you do have that end specific rear diffuser finished in a matte black and to the sides of it all, very large dual exhaust outlets. So I told you guys before we'd be doing an exhaust clip. Get ready, here it is. Variable valve exhaust system coming only with the performance pack. So that is why you're definitely gonna want to get the performance pack, not just for the increase of power, but for this amazing exhaust system. It's one of those exhaust systems where you almost don't even need an aftermarket system for it because it sounds so freakishly good without it. So enough talking. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the blaster and there are a couple different ways to go ahead and open that rear hatch one of them is there is a button on the key fob itself the cooler way there is a button kind of incorporated into that rear window wiper it's kind of hidden and it's just underneath of it so that's probably the way i would use it's kind of cool but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 19.9 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 44.5 cubic feet so a decent amount of space back there for what it is making our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.1 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back there there is also a center tray storage area for those rear passengers there are dual cup holders back there and again the passengers are supposed to enter through the passenger side although they could enter through the driver's side it's just easier with the passenger side but Anyways, making our way to the front seats and specific cloth seats with performance blue stitching and perhaps my favorite part about the interior, performance blue seat belts. Love that. How many manufacturers actually put a color to their seat belts? Almost nobody does anymore, but I love that Hyundai did that in this one. And logo at the very top of that seating, of course. And they are six way manually adjustable front seats, and they are actually plenty comfortable and they are bolstered better than I thought they would be for the performance that this car actually comes with. They're not going to be bolstered as well as the Civic Type R but they definitely have some good bolstering to them. I will say that. Let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is wrapped in a perforated leather. And of course you do have that N logo at the bottom of it as well. And again, the drive mode buttons can be found on that steering wheel. And I love how they're finished in performance blue to match the exterior of this one. That is so cool. But anyways, making our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have that N specific key with your N logo on the one side, all of your buttons on the other, including lock, unlock, panic button, that button to pop the rear hatch but it is all keyless entry so simply just leave the key in your pocket walk up to the Veloster end here put your foot on the brake and clutch and press that engine start button which is located just by the driver's right knee there and so but then once started up end specific gauges once again tachometer with the end logo is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel there through that you have a ton of different information including a lap timer there is g4 statistics there's also a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that up there of course there's your tire pressure when you need your next oil change and it is of course going to show you your drive modes being displayed up there as well so all Oh, that is super nice but making our way now to overall interior quality you do have alloy foot pedals it's probably the first thing i noticed when i first got in this one love that blue stitching throughout also nice thing is the exterior of this one is that performance blue color also blue accents on the shifter itself in the front and the back and i like the shifter itself actually some shifters aren't the best like one that comes to mind is the kia forte gt that one kind of feels like an automatic it's really weird but i like how this is more of a cue ball type shifter so i do appreciate that you also have an overhead sunglass holder found on the roof here and as far as the rest of it it's essentially got your basics other than that just in front of the shifter you have a good bit of storage actually with a rubberized bottom there 12 volt power outlet usb charging port times two auxiliary port as well up there just behind the shifter you have dual cup holders and of course you got a little bit more storage within the center armrest there as well so overall the interior quality it doesn't blow me away but the performance does so that kind of makes up for it but anyways let's go ahead and make our way now to the tech display 
display front and center, 8 inch color touchscreen display coming standard on this one, Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto Apple CarPlay, also standard meaning if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the end, therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs of course. You can also check out your driving statistics up there as well and of course you have your end mode statistics up there as well, I love that, there's a performance timer, GeForce statistics, all of that being displayed up there so that's pretty cool. You can also check out of course your radio information by the way when it comes to the sound system the standard sound system on this one is an infinity eight speaker sound system with an external amp and subwoofer so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Definitely feel that there's a subwoofer without a doubt. That was a ton of bass. Clarity is definitely plenty good as well. So really for what this car is, that sound system is perfectly fine. And again, a ton of bass with that is ridiculous. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Veloster in, in reverse and to put this one in reverse, let me show you guys that real quick. Simply lift up underneath the shifter, slide it into the upper left hand corner. When you do that, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side and side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, and a driver's blind spot mirror as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts of this 2020 vloster and love the performance blue color on this thing and it's really what the end brand has come to be known for so love that love that the blue seat belts tie in with i almost never see colored seat belts like i was saying the power on this is absolutely amazing plenty of power to have fun in this thing six speed manual is excellent i will say that as well and so i learned how to drive manual on a honda s2000 so i'm used to a lot of honda manuals although i've driven basically all of them at this point but this is definitely closer to a honda manual so it's very easy to find the grab points very nice clutch feel love the rev matching it definitely makes me feel like i'm a professional driver in this thing <laughs> definitely a very fun car to drive perhaps my only constructive criticism now that they're having the dual clutch i think that's definitely going to increase their sales for this one although i think i probably would go with the six-speed manual it's that much fun but my only constructive criticism is I wish they would have put an all-wheel drive system in this thing, make it like a rally car to compete with cars like the Subaru WRX. Even as an added option, I would absolutely love that in the Vloster and if you made it all-wheel drive, it would be seriously difficult for me not to consider getting this thing. So anyways, especially living in Pennsylvania, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. This car's fun, man.